Hi there. Looking for a way to set up an iPhone for a visually impaired person? You, my friend, are in the right place. In this video, we're going to take a close look at three simple steps to go in and set up an iPhone or an iPad that makes it easy for someone with a visual acuity issue, low vision problem, legally blind, age-related, dark blind. You can set this thing up, maximize your ability to use these devices. Hi there, my name is Mike. This is the Legally Blind Geek YouTube channel where we do focus on overcoming low vision challenges. In addition to that, anybody that's looking for a really good deal on an iPhone or an iPad, stick around to the end. I'm going to share some information with you where you can pick up one of these devices at prices you're not going to believe. Sound good? Let's get into it. What do you say? Okay, first thing we want to get into and cover on this setting up an iPad or iPhone for someone that's visually impaired is turning on the device, going into the home page, finding the settings icon, opening the settings icon, and then scrolling down to general. We want to start with general simply because we want to check and we want to make sure that we are running the latest and greatest version of the operating system. Currently, I update every time there's an update out there, and very rarely do I ever have any issues with the way accessibility features work. They seem to be really stable, and Apple doesn't do much to mess those up. So we want to go into, like I said, just scroll down to general, look over and find the... Software update button. So software update folder button, if you will. Open that up. The important thing is, as we look down at the middle of the screen, iPad OS 15.3, iPad OS is up to date. And it tells me that my iPad OS 15.3 is up to date, and that is the current software. Once we've done that, next thing we want to do is to set up an iPhone or an iPad for someone with low vision, we want to pay attention to, and we want to be you know, aware of contrast. Contrast is our friend when it comes to having low vision. What we're going to do first off is we're going to set up, we're going to set up a wallpaper for our home screen and a wallpaper for our lock screen. They can be the same, they can be different. That's personal preference. But we're going to walk you through setting up wallpaper and I'm going to share with you my opinion on what works best for someone with low vision. Visually impaired folks have all sorts of reasons why they may have vision issues. From general, we're going to scroll down until we find wallpaper. Accessibility, button, wallpaper, button. Settings, heading. And I'm gonna open the wallpaper section of settings. And at the top of the screen, you're gonna notice that there is a headline up there that has an arrow to the right side of. Open that folder. And on different devices and different operating systems, it may provide you something that's a little bit different than what we're seeing right now. But we have dynamic wallpaper, which is great for those that have good visual acuity. But for myself, I'm legally blind. I don't need all that motion and all that moving around stuff that is associated with dynamic. What I prefer and what works best for me and, and most folks with low vision is something that stays pretty constant. So that takes us to our next uh, option. Still photo wallpapers button. The still photo wallpaper section. We're going to open that. And as you can see, there are a whole bunch of colorful slides here that you can choose from. I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom. Page two of four. Page three of four. Page four of four. And right here is. A solid black background button. That offers the best contrast for me. And chances are, for anybody with a visual acuity issue, the solid black background is going to offer the most contrast. Contrast is a good thing. One other option that we might have... Choose. Back button. Choose. ...is for those of us that know how to use our phones on our iPads and our iPhones, you may elect to take a photograph of something in your surroundings that would work better for you. Something that offers you contrast and also helps you to you know show off a little creativity you know show off a little sense of style and also you know those kinds of things come in pretty handy when we live in a household that is full of folks that use these types of devices that way when you 
pick it up and you open the screen, you can see right away, well, yeah, this is mine or a black background or something more colorful. It's entirely up to you. But once you've got that, you selected one of them, you can set your lock screen to the same thing as you do. Home screen wallpaper button. The home screen. This is where you would do that. You just select those, open them up and say, this is what I want. Where. So once you've got your wallpaper set up, the next thing we want to do is we want to go in to our accessibilities and that's where we're going to start to set this thing up a little bit better for someone that has, you know, low eyesight. The first thing that most visually impaired people, especially the legally blind and the dark blind, find extremely useful is turning voiceover on. Dark blind people, turning voiceover on is the first step. Voiceover on button voiceover accessibility back button and when i select voiceover double tap it with one finger to open it it brings us to the screen where we can turn voiceover on and off voiceover on with this slider you turn voiceover on or you can turn it off completely up to you it's your choice but just be aware that when you turn voiceover on it changes the way the gestures work on your iphone or your ipad for that matter there are practice available. Basically, you just open this little tab here. Voice over practice button. Practice voice over gestures, commands, and typing in this area. Select the done button in the top right corner and double tap to exit. And with voice over practice open, you touch the screen with one finger. Practice voice over gestures, commands, and typing in this area. Select the done button in the top right corner and double tap to exit. And it tells you what you can and can't do. One finger swipe up. Previous rotor item. One finger swipe down. Next rotor item. One finger swipe right. Move to next item. One finger swipe left. Move to previous item. And it's as simple as that. You can practice all the gestures right here. You're prepared to use voiceover when it's turned on. And if you're a sighted person, normally sighted person, you're setting this up for the visually impaired person in your life. This would be a good place to go and work on this together so you both have a good idea as to how the gestures change and how they work. One other important setting for voiceover that we'll get into right now. Speaking rate, heading. The speaking rate, and this is what it sounds like. This will either speed up the voice or slow down the voice. And basically you do that with the slider. Speaking rate, 60%, adjustable. And with this, you can take your one finger gesture, slide from the bottom to the top, that increases the speed and from the top to the bottom of the screen to decrease the speed. And one tip here, when you first start using voiceover, you might want to start out with it slower. That way you can get used to hearing the voice. You can understand it better and it just will make more sense. And that's the key to, you know, somebody that's visually impaired. You know, spoiler alert, we don't hear any better than normally sighted people do. We've just learned to rely on our hearing. We pay attention to things that we hear. We interpret them differently. We process that sound differently. So that's what makes it important for us as far as being able to hear and hear clearly. So you might want to adjust that speed up and down. For a more in-depth look at voiceover and all the settings that go along with it. I'll put a link in the card up above so that you can check out one of the videos that we've done on a full tutorial on voiceover by itself, setting it up for someone with a visual impairment. And, and now what we're going to do is we're going to turn on larger text. Now, when we turn larger text on, that's when we can take full advantage of the uh, wallpaper that we've choose, the background and the contrast. So I'm going to scroll down until I find what I'm looking for. Zoom on display and text size button display and text size is what we're looking for i'm going to open that up voice over selected accessibility button and at the top of the page bold text on the first option is turning bold text on depending on the size depending on the font bold text makes a pretty big difference for folks with a visual acuity problem it makes it easier for us to be able to see the difference in a c and an o or an A or some of these other familiar characters that look similar to one another. So if you turn voiceover on, then you scroll down, you turn the bold text feature on. Bold text is one that you'll have to restart your device in order for it to take effect. Voiceover is not that way. Voiceover, as soon as you turn it on, voiceover comes on. Subsequently, as soon as you turn it off, it goes off. Bold text is one that's a little bit different. 
But having turned it on and got it set up and running, the next thing you want to do is... Larger text. On. Button. Scroll down to the next item on the list, which is larger text. As you heard voiceover say, I have it turned on. I've selected that. I'm going to double tap with one finger to open it. Larger X display and text size. Back button. And here is where you would in turn the accessibility sizes on for the text. It's a little toggle. You turn it on and it will enable text to get larger. And to do that, you just go down to your slider. 100% adjustable. And right now I have it turned on at 100%. Now this is the largest that it will get. Now you'll find out when you're doing this on an iPhone, depends on the model of iPhone, but even the, like the 10s Max or the 11 Pro Max or the 13 Pro Max, the screens are limited to how much you can see on them. So when you get into 100% larger text, you'll notice that you'll have to scroll around to see what you're looking at, to see what you're reading, because the the characters will be large enough that they take up a good portion of the screen. So the trick here is to, and I'm illustrating this on my iPad for that reason, because you get a better look at what is on the screen. Now, when you go to your iPhone, if it's one of the smaller screen phones, the characters will still be the same size. You'll just have to scroll up and down the page to be able to read the entire block of text, which is easy enough to do. Or you can just touch and have voiceover read it for you, in, in which case that doesn't really make any difference at all. But the larger text does help out in those situations when you're in a noisy environment and you can't hear the voiceover. Or on the other hand, you're in an environment where you don't want other people to know what you're doing or hear what's going on on your phone. It's none of their business. You can turn the volume all the way down or you can turn voiceover off and just rely on the text on the screen either with your naked eye, with some cheaters on, you know, like reading glasses might help some folks, or you get a pop pocket hand magnifier and, and read the screen without any voiceover. And, oh, just so that you know, on all these devices, whether you use the home button or the side button or whatever, when you set up accessibility shortcuts, Alert. Accessibility shortcuts. You triple tap that button, this comes on so that you can turn voiceover on and off or any of the other accessibility features that you have turned on and set up this way. You can turn it on and off and just rely on the text. Selected. And I'll accessibility put a link button. to that article, or excuse me, I'll put a link to that uh, video that we did on setting up voiceover in more detail for basic and advanced settings in the description box below or maybe up in the card that you'll see up in the top right-hand corner. What you do to adjust it once you've got it turned on is you select the slider. 100% adjustable. And then like anything else, the slider works the same thing from the swipe with one finger from the top of the screen to the bottom. 91%, 82%, 73%, 64%, 55%. The text will get smaller by some percentage that they have come up with. I guess it's 50% of the largest text available. Similar to that, if you'll swipe from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. 55%, adjust 64%, 73%, 64%. You can move up and down, make the text larger just by moving your finger up and down. 73%, 82%. You find something that, 73%. Works, for you, that works for you on your device. And then you set it, and basically you forget it. Once you've done it once, you don't have to do it again. Well, there you go. Three quick and easy steps to take to set up an iPhone or an iPad for the visually impaired person. You know, whether they are just suffering from age-related low vision issues, or they're legally blind like myself, or even the folks that are dark blind due to illness, accident, or what have you. You can set up an iPhone and an iPad for someone with a visual impairment so that they can use it, sending and receiving texts, emails, checking out social media sites. I did promise that I would tell you about some really good deals on purchasing an iPad or an iPhone. I'm talking about renewed devices here. Now, buying a renewed device is kind of like buying a used car. You're not necessarily going to want to run a ride out and pick up one from one of those buy here, pay here lots. Chances are the service after the sale is not going to be quite what we expect. Conversely, if you go and follow one of the Amazon links in the description box down below, it'll take you to Apple's renewed iPhones and iPad. There's one down there that an iPhone that's less than $200. That's a pretty good deal. 
And regardless of what model it is and what age the phone is, as long as it's a 6 or newer, you're going to be fine. Apple still supports that. You still get updates. The accessibility features like voiceover and uh, the larger text work just fine on that. Check them out. In addition to that, if you're looking for an iPad, iPad's starting for under 500 bucks, which isn't a bad deal. And if you want something that's newer, say like the 2021 12.9 inch iPad for a thousand bucks or so. Sounds like good deals. Check them out in the description box down below. See what you know. You think about it. If it's a great deal for you, fantastic. If you find something better, fantastic as well. We're all about overcoming low vision challenges here. So if you have some suggestions, some ideas, please use them in the comment section down below. Just post them. Say, hey, what's going on? Hey, while you're at it, do this for me. Let me know what steps you find more useful for you or the person that you know that has a visual impairment. Voiceover, how do they use that? Larger text, do they find that useful? Let me know in the comment section down below. I really appreciate it. Before I get out of here, let me ask you. If you found it helpful, some good content, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, hit the notification bell so that you get notified when we post a new video or if we got some chat going on in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for sticking around with me. Make it a great day. Catch you in the next one.